What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for another set review with Rob and I. We are doing the Zendikar Rising set review today. This time we're going to do a little different. We're going to break it down into three parts instead of two, because two is sometimes really long. And yeah. I feel like we're going over a lot of cards. At 265 or 69 cards in the set, it's like 100 and... It's almost like 130 or 140 cards per... Um, proportion and also like since there's double face cards it's almost like there's a second like a, a second card for certain cards it's like so, half a card <clears throat> right it's like yeah it's like scry you know like every uh every one and a half cards is one card you know so yeah and um <clears throat> so we're gonna go through the white and the blue on this part then we're gonna go through black and red and then we'll do uh green gold and colorless and uh one thing i did was i put the double face cards at the end of each color uh, in the card gallery, they're all at the end. There's like a big section at the end with all of the double face cards. I just put those at the end of their respective colors. So, so like normally when we when we do these, we get like through the first like 30 minutes, and then we're like, hey, we should probably speed through these really crappy right two minute tutus. Yeah, are we gonna try to do that from the beginning? Yeah, we can do that. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right, Allied Assault is the first card. Three mana, two and a white for an instant. Up to two target creatures get plus X, plus X, where X is the number of creatures in your party. How, I mean, this card just depends on how relevant uh, part the party mechanic is in, in like, Constructed, right? Yeah, I mean, it can yeah. obviously be great if you're getting plus eight, plus eight across two creatures, but how, how easy is it going to be to have four creatures on the battlefield? And I think it's worth noting that um, if you have one of those creatures that says, like, it's this, 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 and this, like, it's all party members, you know those? Yeah. Um, those don't give you plus, like, plus four, plus four. Yeah, they count individually. Yeah, because it says for each, cr the number of creatures in your party, not the number of creature types. So Correct. you actually have, you have to have individual creatures for all the, for all the types. Um, however, if you have, like, a warrior, a rogue, and a cleric in play, and one creature that's like, it's all those types, it will fulfill that fourth role. So it will, it's like a wild card basically, but it does not do all of them. Right. Yeah, exactly. So in order to, and the only way you can have this maxed out would be with four creatures at minimum on the battlefield. Correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. Cause if you have two guys, it's, you know, you're only going to have maximum two. If you have three, it's only maximum three. Um, this card's good limited. Yeah. It's good and limited. That's it. Yep. You're not going to play, you're not going to pay three mana for a pump spell in, in constructed. Yep. Angel of Destiny. This card's this card's interesting. Five mana for a two six flying double striker. So basically a four six, in terms of damage. Uh, yeah. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each gain that much life. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if you have at least fifteen more life than your starting life total. So for for purposes here, thirty five. Um, <clears throat> each player Angel of Destiny attack this turn loses the game. Why does this have double strike and not just why don't you make it a four six? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe because there are ways to like um, make it unblockable because it only has two power. There, you know, I remember there's like uh, red creatures that make things with like power two or less unblockable. Also, I guess I guess with Allied Assault, it's fine because if you give it plus three, it's actually plus True. six. But yeah. I mean, like for a mythic, it just seems weird because the double strike doesn't inherently do anything on the card itself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And for constructed applications, like you're not really pumping cards like this. But. This is a this is a weird card. I, I think it's it's weird to me because like it doesn't block. I mean, obviously it blocks well because it's a two six two six flying double striker. But as far as getting you to the fifteen life, like it doesn't have life link. Right. It's kind of weird. But I mean, like, yeah. I mean, it got, it does. It kind of has life link though, right? No, because it has to deal it deal it to a player. So like, if you're attacking, oh, if you're five, like, yeah. Five, so if they block, you're not going to gain life, right? Yeah, I you have to use this aggressively in order to pop it off. Yeah. So the thing is, like, one thing is, like, if you give this, so like, like, let's say if you, uh, they're your opponents at twenty, if you give this plus six, plus six somehow, like you're actually getting a plus twelve, uh, which would deal. It's fourteen, right? Yeah, that's no, that, that's sixteen. Yeah, because of the two, right, right, right. No, 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 no. Six plus six is twelve. Plus two and two is four. You're right. That's sixteen. Yeah. So that's <laughs> what I mean. Like so. Yeah. So if you go plus six plus six, like it's you can just kill your opponent in one turn with this. But it's just a really weird card, and it's kind of hard to, to. You know to evaluate. Yeah, I, I look at this card and I think that this isn't a card that's meant to get you the extra 15 life by itself. It's the last final push when it finally attacks. I personally don't like it. I think that it 
It's five mana, and you're going to love it when I say do nothing when it comes into play. Um, no, I agree with you. Like, it doesn't do much. Like, the like if you take off that last part of the card, it's basically just a 2-6 with sometimes lifelink that gains your opponent life. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't really like this mythic. It's very weird. I definitely think um, life gain strategies have been very fringe. Um, certainly, there have been much stronger individual cards that made you know other archetypes not as good it is so i i could see getting to 35 life but it is worth noting that it's whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player so it's not just the angel oh so like if you have a board with like seven power on it like you know that's interesting it is interesting whenever a creature you control okay deals combat damage to a player so you both gain life at the beginning of your instep if you have at least 15 life but this creature had to have attacked. Right. So it doesn't matter. Like, you can't play this and then win with a bunch of life, with a bunch of life that turn, you know? Right. You have to actually attack with this as well. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I don't like, know how to judge it. it's a weird card that's hard to evaluate, but I also feel like I will lose to this at some point in, in Constructed. <laughs> so. You think whatever. in Constructed? I don't know. Maybe. How's Rob's audio level, guys? Can you let me know? He's a little low in my ears, but I think it looks fine on the. On the Am things. I left? Okay. He's... All right. Angel Heart Protector. Three mana for a 3-2. When it enters the battlefield, target creature you control gains indestructible till end of turn. That's cute. That'll be nice and limited. Yeah, it's just a limited card. Yeah, if it had Flash, it may be worthy, I was thinking but... that, too. I was like, it'd be a nice combat trick if it had Flash, but then you're pushing into, like, uncommon territory. <clears throat> Archon of Emeria. Two and a white for a 2-3. Flyer, each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. So you already have a white hate bear, like Eidolon of Mm -hmm. Rhetoric. Non basic lands, your opponent's control under the battlefield tapped. That's a so it's interesting because all of these white, like hate bear creatures, even though this costs three mana, um, (laughs) they all have like a certain like there's like a selection, a modal selection of like abilities, like lands come into play tapped, spells cost one more. Creatures your opponent's uh, control come into play tapped. Right, can't cast more than one spell a turn. Can't search your library. And they're just like, they have a dartboard, and they're just like, all right, let's put this one and this one on there. But again, I mean, it's still good, you know, so. I mean, this card is good. It's not like, I don't think it's crazy good. If it was a 2-4 or a 1-4, I think it becomes significantly better in older formats. But the fact that it's, you can hit it with a bolt, um, so if you want to say, like, this is great for... I mean, basically, we already have these effects, right? You have Eidolon. Um, you also have the non-basic lands is the same as Thalia. And I personally like the three-mana Thalia better. But Well, I mean, it's not a contest, Rob, okay? Sorry. But, I mean, yeah, I think this is good. This is going to fulfill a role. It's a 2-3 flyer. I mean, it has two relevant abilities. Like, the both of these abilities have seen play, you know? So, mm-hmm. it's, I, you know, I don't see any problem with it. I, I think that a card like this is a really sweet way and standard to post board just punish three man three color decks. That where most of their lands are non basic. Yeah, because they're gonna have like four or five lands total that are basic lands. I mean, this card straight punishes. I mean, it even punishes the cycles of lands in this set. You know, that yeah. like are none of them are none of them are basic. Basically, any land that's in a set is basically gonna be a non basic land. So that's kind of goes without saying, I guess. Mm. Arch, Arch, Archpriest of Iona. One mana for a star two creature. Uh, Archpriest of Iona's power is equal to the number of creatures in your party. So when you cast this on turn one, it is a squire. It is a one two. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, target creature gets plus one plus one and flying until end of turn. Like, I mean, the fact that this is a one drop that could be a four two <laughs> and then give, give like plus one plus one and flying. So like a five three flyer. Because it doesn't say another creature. It says, you know, target creature, you can target itself. I mean, for one mana, this is not bad if you're building, like... Like, if there's, like, a a party deck that's similar to, like, a human's deck, this could be very good. I definitely think you're going to see party decks, uh, low-to-the-ground aggro party decks. I think that this card is very good. I mean, your odds of getting either a warrior, rogue, or wizard on turn two to follow this up is pretty high. Like, I'm pretty sure you can get one of those. Or or another one-drop. Right, so this... Right, so, well... Yeah, but I mean, like, it's got to be non-cleric, right? Right, but I'm saying there's, there's going to be ap- there's going to be applications. I think that this card is very good. I think I think yeah. you will see this card attacking you probably as a three-two at minimum. I feel like um, one drops like this have always seen play historically, like Toolcraft Exemplar. From, oh yeah, uh, from Kaladesh. 
You yeah. know, like, I mean, it's like, oh, well, if you have three artifacts and you're like, all right, well, I'll just make it so I do. And then they do. So, I mean, I feel like cards like this, like these one drops that like get really, really strong abilities once you have a certain criteria in the late game. It's good because like it means it's not a dead top deck, you know, like this is this is like a four two for one mana that gives a guy flying if, in the late yeah. game, you know. So, yeah, this card seems good. It's a very good card to me. I think this is great. It is very good card to me. <laughs> Attended healer. Four mana for a 2-3. All right, well. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, make a 1-1 one, one white cat creature token. Man, I love the third life how, how, how freely they're using cats and dogs now. Yeah. And for three mana, two and a white, another cleric gains lifelink until end of turn. Uh, this card seems great for limited. Like, I would literally windmill slam this and build and like just pick up all the life gain stuff. But yeah. as far as constructed, four mana for a 2-3 is probably not where you want to be the only way that i think this would be um somewhat playable and i don't even really think it would be would be if you switched the uh tr the ability so if it said pay three mana to create a one one cat uh and then uh there was a way to like give them lifelink or something but the fact that you have to gain life just to get a one one is this too it's not good enough yeah and also this is another cleric so can't even target itself yeah all right Canyon Jerboa. I, I looked this up. This is the first mouse in Magic's history. So I saw that in your article. Uh, I love it. I love that you read it. Yep. Means a lot. Really does. Three mana for a 1-2. Uh, with landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. This card seems really good. Like, giving your whole team plus one, plus one just for landfall is pretty good. And this uh. is often going to be attacking as a 2-3 three for three. Mm -hmm. Um, It's obviously worse than constructed, but in limited, this card's great. Yeah, this card this card seems very good and limited. Yep. If this was a mouse cleric or a mouse wizard, I could probably see it playing in standard. But you know, without a it would be type. cool. It would be cool if it was a mouse, wi put mouse a hat on wizard. Yeah, I don't think this is standard playable. Cliff Haven Cell Sword, not to be confused with Cliff Clavin Cell Sword, which is uh, on Cheers. Two mana for a three one. Okay, we've seen this card eight thousand times, and uh, this one's a warrior, so that's good. That's relevant for the. You know, for limited for the warrior stuff yeah the warrior i'm gonna move my there we go dauntless unity two mana for a for an instant one in white uh creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn if this spell was kicked those creatures get plus two plus one until the end of turn instead so two mana for plus one plus one the kicker is two so four mana for plus two plus one i think this card actually is very good and i Ooh. i could see this played in standard Cards like this do sometimes see play, like Pride of the Conquistadors. What is it called? Is that what it's called? Pride, uh, Pride of the Conquerors. Yeah. Pride of the Conquerors. Yep. And, yeah. um, you know, I mean, like the fact is, sometimes you'll use the plus one plus one, but having the ability to give it plus two plus one in a late game is just fine. That's huge. Yeah, I mean, because it's just mana you're not going to use anyway. So, I mean, if you if you look at it, if you only have three creatures on the battlefield, so obviously this is going to go in a low to the ground aggro deck like a red white or mono white, whatever. If you have three creatures only, this is still giving you an extra six power. Like that's a lot of damage. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, yeah, if there's like a go wide token strategy, like this seems fine. And hunter walked in. A disenchant two mana destroy target artifact or enchantment. I don't like the art. It's still. I... <laughs> I think, like, I mean, like, this card, Disenchant was great. It was a staple, but back in the day, it was it was equivalent to Naturalize. Now it plays second to uh, Return to Nature. And I just don't know if it's good enough anymore. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's probably fine, but it could be better. It's not. Make it better. White actually deals with graveyard stuff, too. So just make it, make a, make it a white Return to Nature. Return to Enchant. Come on. We can <laughs> just make it do the it same thing. It could be called disenchant or not. Like if you <laughs> dis what about dis disenchant or that enchant? Dis <laughs> so like you could have yeah because like you have naturalize and disenchant were the exact same card. Uh, they upgraded naturalize now upgrade disenchant. If you could do one, you could do the other. They were already the same exact card. Yeah. One one for four. Emiria captain. Flying and vigilance. One one for four. You better work for it. When it enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on it for each creature in your party. So it's a 2-2 two, two at minimum. Uh, yes, because it's a warrior. Correct. So, yeah, it's a 2-2 two, two flyer for 4. If you have one other creature, it's a 3-3 three, three flyer for 4. Like, that's not bad. It's not constructible, right? But, like, no. I mean, like, in limited, you probably always play this. 
yeah any yeah, creature I, more I, than I like that. one is just upside like and i'm pretty sure most creatures in this format in this set are have the have a, have a party type yeah yeah uh expedition healer one and a white for a two two with vigilance it has lifeling as long as you control another cleric it's close. It's close to to, to standard playable, I think, because the vigilance in two two is nice, but like it's just not. I don't know. Maybe it's not even close. Never mind. I lied. I, I think it is close. I think it is close because you still get like like Knight of Meadow Grain, right? It's a two two first strike with lifelink. Like two two vigilance with lifelink is good. It's close, but it doesn't have like the requirement of another cleric is rough. Yeah. Or if it was, I, I was more so thinking like if it was a two three, or. Like, I feel like it's just, it's missing one thing. Like, there's one one edit to this card, and it could be standard playable. Yeah. But we're not there. No. That's sad. You know what would have been actually a really cool way to make this card? And it would have actually been, like, with the times, would be this exact card. But it has extra text that says, when it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Or sacrifice it, destroy target artifact or enchantment. That would have made it playable. Um, That would have made it really good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> farsight adept three mana when farsight enters adept into the battlefield you and target opponent each draw a card <clears throat> i don't want that to happen yeah this especially especially with no evasion and it's just a three three nope it's just a three three for three like no i don't want uh, no i'm good fearless yeah. fledgling this art is wonderful <laughs> one one fly no it's not even a flyer one one for two uh but landfall when a land enters the battlefield under control put a one one counter on it and it gains flying this is actually really strong. This is uh the first land is a 2/2 flyer. Every land after that is just just getting bigger. Yeah, this is not bad. You'd have to see the decks that are made, but I it would not surprise me if this makes it. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either, especially uh, yeah, you know what? Whenever I see Zendikar, I just assume at some point we're going to have fetch lands in the same format. Yeah, yeah. But like Fable yeah, Passage dumb. puts two counters on this, like Yeah. It's not bad. This card seems good. Yeah, I actually like this. I, it is good. Start, it's an all star in limited, but I well, like it's it's too to be determined and constructed. But I would not I would not be surprised. Yeah, have you have you started a list yet? Have we done that yet? We normally always forget in the beginning. We really do, just like this time. All right, you want me to you want me to tell you you want me to rip it off real quick and I'll, I'll let yeah you know. rip it off real quick because you got the list. All right, all right. Did we want to put Angel of Destiny on it? The weird card. No, I don't think so. All right, I'm Archon. Just not sold oh, on it. Yeah, me neither. Archon of Amiria. Archpriest of Iona. Okay. Uh, Dauntless Unity was a maybe. That was the kicker with plus two, plus yeah, one. Yeah, that's fine. I'll put it on there. And then Fle Fearless Fledgling. Yeah, and then and then the... So only Squaw those four, huh? Squ Squawky Bird. Okay, Squawky Bird. Felidar Retreat. Four mana for an enchantment. Oh, this card's actually very good. Dude, this card's really good. When we just banned this card. Land, what? We just banned this. This card was just banned in formats. Whenever a land enters the battlefield in your control, choose one. Create a 2-2 white cat beast creature token. Or put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. Yeah, this is so a field of the dead. What? It's field of the dead. Yeah, it's field of the dead. Right, like, except it comes down on turn four instead of, like, turn six. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This card's. I saw this card and I was like, so I just play lands and make two twos. I mean, yes, it's easier to deal with in Field of the Dead for sure, but nonetheless, the card is very, very strong. This card, this card's really good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say because like we know how good just making two twos for no cost is. Plus, like you can play multiples in your deck, so if you have two of these, you can make two cats. Another land, you could put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control twice. Like, it just has yeah. a lot of strength. Yeah, and then um, it, you can trigger it. I mean, like, you know, obviously there's there's only a couple lands, but you could trigger it instant speed. You could use Field of Ruin to trigger it. Like, I'm not saying, you know, to, to people in chat, I'm not saying that this card is the exact same power level as Field of the Dead, but it doesn't have to be to That's be a great saying. card. <laughs> also, keep in mind that, like, I mean, it is an enchantment, so you can kill it, but, like, I don't know how many people are going to be main decking enchantment removal, you know, like... We're losing Assassin's Trophy. Um, we're losing Knight of Autumn. So, like, we have v fewer tools to deal with enchantments for sure. That we would normally run in the main deck, yeah. And the other thing is this this stacks just like um, just like uh, Field of Dead did yeah, too, you know? Yeah, 
Yeah. Only it's different because like sometimes you don't need cats and you just want to give all you all guys vigilance and plus one plus one permanently. You can do that. Yeah. Uh, Journey to Oblivion. Five mana, four and a white. It costs one less for each card in your party. Each creature in your party. So this could cost one mana. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile a non-land permanent and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. I mean, in the in the party deck, this is an all-star, right? Like, Yeah. It's a combination of Journey to Nowhere and um, Oblivion Ring, I think. What's the, what's the Journey to Nowhere? Journey to Nowhere is the two-mana no, exile. What's the, part, what's the part of it that, that this has? Well, I'm, I'm saying the name, the way they combine the names. Oh, Journey to Oblivion. Got it. And yeah. the art is very Journey to Nowhere as well. Yeah. I, I actually think um, at first this doesn't look amazing because you see the cost and it costs five but the fact that i mean to me i compare it to uh what's the one that we have in standard right now that convokes that costs four uh conclave tribunal yes but you don't have to tap your creatures for this right and 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 it's rotating so sure yeah so rob that's not even an option buddy no 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 i I was saying I'm, i'm comparing it to it I wasn't saying that would I use one or the other. I'm saying it reminds me of it's that very, card. Yeah, it is very similar, right? Because it's a cost-reductive banishing light, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, you don't want to play five for it, but it's very possible you can pay down to one or two mana for it, and that's really good. Yeah. Kabira Outrider. Four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, a cre- target creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature in your party. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's draft chaff, yep. Good, good job, Ostrich. <laughs> Kite Sail Cleric, a 1-1 flyer for 1 mana. You can kick it for, for 2 and a white, so 4 mana total. When Kite Sail Cleric enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, tap up to 2 target creatures. Eh. I mean, the only way this is... No, I don't... I, never mind. No, this isn't any good. I mean, I think it's it's great and limited, obviously. I mean, like, yeah. I think I think the fact that all these cards are, like, adding to your party is very relevant, right? Like, it's a core cleric for... It's a 1-1 flyer for 1. It's going to make your... Archpriest of Iona, like uh, that much better. Like in the late game, it does let you get damage in. I think this, I think this card's fine. If there is an aggressive like um, party deck, you, I could see playing this just to be like tap your two blockers. Yeah. Play a, a cleric that I need for my party. You know, like it, this deck's shaping up to be like a kind of a combo deck because this is also reduces the cost by Journey to Oblivion uh, by one. You know, so. <laughs> Right, it's like every individual card is a C plus, but once you've put two or three of them together, everything is a B. B because plus. they're all like they're all they're all helping each other, obviously. For right. like, you know, like as a party. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't I, think this. This is. I don't know. I'd have to see a deck, but I don't think this is constructed playable. I don't think it's great, but I think it has potential. Yeah. Core Blade Master, a one one for two, double strike. So it's like fencing ace, but equipped equipped warriors you control have double strike. I mean, if there's an equipment deck, I think this is fine. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, there have been times where um, one ones with double strike can can do stuff. Yeah. I mean, I mean so, fencing ace was. I mean, like it's fine. Yeah. I'm not going to put it on the list, but I do. I no. do think it's worth consideration. Core celebrant, three mana for a one four. Uh, he's throwing a triforce. <laughs> Legend of Zelda. Whenever core celebrant or another creature enters the battlefield, you gain a life. It's a one four, so it's fine. But like, I mean, for three mana, like this is not the cost that I want for my, for my soul attendants, my soul wardens. You know, the only way the only way this is playable is if there is a way to go infinite with it. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think there is, but you know, maybe you never know. You weird never weird know. stuff has happened, right? Legion Angel. This card's very interesting. Two white white for an angel warrior with flying. It's a four three. And when Legion Angel enters the battlefield, you may reveal a card you own named Legion Angel from outside the game and put it into your hand. I think this card's actually really good. So if you have one in your main deck and three in the sideboard, you can only ever search out the one from your sideboard. No. Well, technically, yes, when you cast the first one, but then you cast the second one. Oh, the second one, and then that'll get the third one. Yeah. The problem is if you have one in your main deck, you're not going to draw it that frequently. Uh, right, I think it has. I think I think at best this is probably like a a, a three one split. But still, the fact that you're like wingmate wingmate rock, it kind of you know it's close so you to wingmate rock. Three of these in your main deck? No, I don't think I'd want that either. But I'm saying I I don't know. This card seems good. It, it this could be a control card. It's you know good, I mean? but it's really complicated. 
It is. And sideboard sideboards are important nowadays. I guess. So I how many do you put in the main deck? Two. I'm going with two. You think it's a two two split? It's two two split. We are not losing Dream Trawler. Dream Trawler was in Theros. I'm gonna put it down. I think it's interesting. Oh, I think you should put it down for sure. It, it's smarter people than myself have to figure out how, how to how to use this. <laughs> how to split this guy. Yeah. Okay. Luminarch Aspirant. Uh, it's a 1-1 one, one for 2, 1 and a white. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. This, this seems... This seems I great. Mean, we, yeah, we have Conclave Mentor. There's a lot of ways to, to work with, with his ability. Her, it it's their ability. Luminarch. Yeah, especially because even if you have no other creatures, it's still just attacking. It's a 2-2 when it comes into play. It's a 3-3 on the next turn. Like, it just keeps getting bigger, so... Yeah. Yeah, by itself. By itself, it spirals. Yeah, this card's good. And, and, like, the fact that you can put it on any creature you control. doesn't have to be a party member. doesn't have to be a specific creature type. Yep. Having two of these in play, you, you're probably dead. Yep. Uh, McKindy Ox, 4-4 four, four for 5. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent control is great for limited. Um, unfortunately, just like every other ox that has ever been printed in Zendikar, <laughs> you probably will not see play. So I have a question. If you were, if if you and Katie were on a trip and you were driving down the road and you saw a, a field and they had a bunch of McKinney oxes in it, right? Would you try and touch one? Oh, that's interesting. I thought your I thought your question was going to be what sound would it make? No, 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 no. Because that's usually. <laughs> That's usually a Rob question. What I'll sound would the later. McKinney Ox make? <laughs> McKinney Ox sits down at the bar next to you. What is he drinking? No, what I, is he I, like? I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't touch it because it's a 4-4. If it was one of the 0-4s, like a Yoke Dox, definitely touch it. <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind of a design fail, right? Wouldn't the Yoke Dox be a 4-4? Why, because he's yoked? Yeah. Well, I don't design Oxes, Mike, uh, Rob. <laughs> I called you Mike for a second. I'm like... Dang it! I am I am Mike. We are all Mike. Mall I would go touch. I would touch it. <laughs> I bet you would. I yeah. bet you would. <laughs> Mall of the Skyclaves. You ever been to the Mall of the Skyclaves? No, I've never been there, but I heard it's a wonderful place. Yeah, they got a lot of good stores in there. Okay. Three mana, two and a white, for an equipment. When Mall of the Skyclaves enters the battlefield, attach it to a creature. So free attach. This is equipment that free attach are kind of nice, and I feel like that's kind of like a more common theme now. Because no one wants to pay, like, three mana, and then I'm not do anything, and then pay four more mana to equip it. No one wants to do that. So the equip cost is four. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has flying and first strike. For three mana, this card's pretty good. I think this is very good. I mean, for three mana, you're giving two, two, flying, and first strike. But, unlike, in a, unlike an aura, it just sticks around if they kill the creature. Yeah, I think I think there's a good number of these equipments that we're, we're going to see in the set are going to be playable. I mean, you can go turn to uh, Double Strike Guy. Yeah. Uh, attack, core Blade Master. Put Maul of the Skyclaves on it on turn three and just attack for six in the air. Like, that's a 3-3. Three, three and they, even if they kill the creature, you still get to keep Maul of the Skyclaves. Yeah, that's. I think these are good. I think uh, the cycle we're going to see, are, uh, they're good. Frank Watsy here. We want to bring you on board to design our Oxen <laughs> cards. You know what? It's about time. <laughs> I've been waiting. Mesa Lynx. 2-1 for 2. As long as it's not your turn, it gets plus 0, plus 2. So this is a 2-3 for 2 on, on their turn. A 2-1 attacker. That's cute. Yeah. Okay. Nahiri's Binding. 1 white white. Enchant a creature or a planeswalker. Enchanted permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Give me flash. Okay. Not playable, though? Nope. Really? Mm -mm. why i don't know there's gotta be i don't know there's there's gotta be other ways to do this exact same effect at three mana and standard yeah. right is banishing lights the legal yeah because it's not theros right it's always in theros i don't know man okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna pass then paired tactician two and a white for a three two one paired tactician and at least one other creature or other warrior attack put a one one counter this is a card we've seen a bunch of times yeah the three um, two for three like the battalion card makeshift battalion yeah. or something yeah like it's always like if you attack with this this other creature, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. And you're like, all right, but I don't want to do that. Because it still, it still likes the three toughness creatures, so it's still getting blocked by a ton of things. You got and blocked by their two drop. You're always forced to attack with a, like a subpart, like a two-two creature. And they're like, all right, I'll just kill that guy and I'll deal with this guy later. Yeah. It's no usually, good. you're always suiciding like another creature into the, into the mix. Practiced tactics. One white... 
for an instant. Choose an attacking or blocking creature. This deals damage equal to the number of twice the number of creatures in your party. So if you just have one one party member, it deals two. If you have three, it deals six. I mean, the sweet spot is having two party members, right? Yeah, two, two, two pretty much deals with really anything that you want. But this card actually seems pretty good simply because it costs one mana. Also, in the like again, if there's a party deck, I think this is definitely going into it. Yeah, I think this is a phenomenal interaction spell for an aggressive deck based on the fact that it costs one. Yeah, I agree. I think this card's I good. like it. All right, I'm put it on the list. Pressure point. Tap a creature, draw a card. We've seen this a million times. Mm-hmm. I mean, it says draw a card, so I can't hate it, but I don't care that much. Yeah. Prowling Felidar. Four mana for a 2-3 with Vigilance. So 2-3 for four. Whenever a lander does a battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. This is not bad. With the, for the, Consider their counters, it's not bad. It's not no. constructed playable. No. But uh, it's definitely great and limited. 3-4, yep. 4-5, four, four, five, five, six, Like, It's got a great limited body. It does have a great limited body. Your body's very limited. But it's great. Resolute Strike. One green. One, one green. One white. Target creature gets plus two, plus two. If it's a warrior, you may attach an equipment you control to it. Oh, this is nice. I mean, this, this is kind is of a, nice. this can be kind of a blowout, right? Like, yeah. you attack with your one one. You're like, all right, plus two, plus two. Attach my mall, my Colossus mall, or whatever it is. I mean, I think that thing is rotating, but no, nonetheless, the point is, like, you can put like a really big equipment on this for free. Yeah. Like, yeah, this doesn't seem bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, you just attach an Ember Cleave for free. Mm-hmm. You're just like, uh, all right, put an Ember Cleave on it, and give it plus two, plus two. Right. That's like not nothing. Yeah, this card seems. Yeah. This that's a total of scary. six damage. That's a total of six double strike trample damage yeah. for one mana. If you I'm one hundred percent sure, I will lose to this card at some point. You will lose to this. <laughs> Seagate okay. Banneret, one white for a one two. For five mana, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Nah, I mean it's a warrior, so you got that, but mm, that's about it. Shepherd of Heroes, five mana for a three four. When it enters the battlefield, gain two life for each creature in your party. Nah. Okay. Skyclave Apparition. One white white for a 2-2. Two, two. I wish it flew because every time I see a spirit, I assume <laughs> it flies. Flew. When Skyclave Apparition enters the battlefield, exile up to one non-land, non-token permanent you don't control with converted mana cost four or less. So it gets rid of Banishing Lights, Creatures, Planeswalkers. When Skyclave Apparition leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates an XX where X is a converted card, converted mana cost of the exiled card. When I first saw this card, I thought it was trash. I was like, oh, that sucks. But keep in mind, they don't get the permanent back. They just get the stupid creature. Yeah, no, this card is, this card's fantastic. Yeah. It reminds me of, um, baffle, it's just baffling end, right? Like it's just a baffling end right. that can target any permanent and also... Uh, you know, four or less, not three or less. Yeah, this card actually, if anything, it's it's be- well, I guess I can't say it's better because it costs three, but I, I think that this is just better than baffling in because they can only get a one one, they can only get a two two back. You can also deal with a, a, a four mana permanent. Yeah, this card's great. Uh, how does it hose tokens? I don't understand. It all- oh, it hose because they have a zero zero mana cost, so they get a, they don't get a token back, they don't get a, a an illusion back. Right, but it says X up to one non-land, non-token permanent. You can't target tokens to begin with. Oh, who said that, dummy? <laughs> like, that doesn't do anything. So wait um, a minute. It says, someone in chat said this also has two triggers for flickering. So do, so does this read the same as the old Exile enchantments where if, while it's on the stack, you can you can blink it? Does that work? Hmm. I, what doth like? I'm not expecting you to read because I'm reading them for you. Um... So, I don't know. It's kind of confusing. So, like, you put this on the stack. The first ability is on the stack, right? Um, in response, you blink this. They don't get to create anything because... Well, they wouldn't get to create anything off of the the first the leave first the trigger. battlefield trigger because right. there's nothing exiled under it. My question would it be... It comes back. Do you still get the trigger? So, like, hostage taker... Well, yeah, you always still get if, the trigger. Yeah, but no, well, no, you don't. So if I hostage, if I do a hostage taker, it never leaves the battlefield. Right. That's because it's worded differently. Because it says until it leaves the battlefield. So once it, it's already left. Okay. So then this does work that way, yes. which is actually pretty interesting. So you could play this and blink it, and then you're going to take two things, and only one of them would ever gives, come back. 
Yeah, if if they if they deal with it, they only actually no. One. Neither comes back. One would one would give you a token. Correct. Yeah. So you yeah. can take eight mana worth of permanents from them and give them a four four at most. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, that's good. I mean, obviously, it's very very good, and it's only three mana. Put this on the list twice. Well, why? Because because we're, fl we're flickering it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Makes, yeah. Sense. Makes sense. Okay. Squad Commander, four mana for a three three. This seems very. I feel like I've seen like cards like this before. The like the the. The uh, the tribal centerpiece card that's always a three three for four. Yeah. I have to sneeze. <coughs> oh, okay. I also woke the dogs up. When squad commander enters the battlefield, create a one one for each creature in your party. That seems very good. So it's already a three three and a one one for four mana by itself. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, creatures gain plus one plus zero oh, and indestructible. This seems. It's good. a good curve topper at the top. Like, you curve into this with your 1, 2, and 3 drop. Yeah. So, what does that mean? I don't know, man. Whatever. I don't think it's I think it's it good seems enough. good. I, I'm going to assume there's going to be some sort of party deck, and I feel like this could be in it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the cards, the party cards down. Party cards? It's very rare that there's, like, an, art, an aggressive, like, tribal synergy deck that doesn't have some constructed application. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All creatures you control. Uh... Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain indestructible, not just creatures in your party. So if you have a, a stray, uh, you know, soldier, it'll get plus. It'll stay, it still gets the, the buff, so. You know what? I, I, I'm i going to be honest with you. I, I just misread this card. Create a 1-1 one, one white core warrior token for each creature in your party. Right. Okay, that that's better. Yeah, I, I think this is good enough. I misread that. I thought you only get one, one, one token. It just, it's an ETB effect. No, I said at the very least, it's a four, four, like it's a four, 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 four. It's over two out. bodies, right? I blacked out. But like, if you have, what well, if you have three warriors, then you still get three tokens, right? Because those are still creatures in your party. No, because it says you only, it, your party consists of up to one. So if you have three warriors, that counts as one warrior. Okay. You can only have one. Okay. But st but still, if you have t if, let's just say this enters the battlefield with one other creature, so let's just say you have a wizard on the battlefield. This enters the battlefield, it becomes a five five. For yeah. Four. Yeah, it's still it's still three bodies for for four mana, which is like I mean then you're then you're like in cloud goat ranger territory, you know. Yeah, this is this is pretty good. Uh, that's what I fucking said. God. Uh, well, well, I mean, I think you read the, I think you read the card wrong in the beginning, uh, which made me misinterpret it. Yeah, I, I'm sure it was me. I'm sure I misread it. <laughs> hey, I want to before. First off, I definitely think that goes on the list. I want to go back because I just had a thought. Somebody in chat mentioned with the Skyclave apparition, uh, sacrificing it, so you can sack it while it's on the stack. That's actually very good. And you know what seems even more busted is if you have that with uh, Twilight Shepherd. Which one's Twilight Shepherd? That's the oh come on, that's the four mana black card that you like, the flyer that makes you you exile it from your graveyard. You mean Nightmare Shepherd? What did I say? Twilight Shepherd, which is a completely oh, that's a different, different card. card. That's a different card. But you knew what I meant. I didn't because that's why I asked. <laughs> okay. But you knew what I meant good. when you asked what card. That seems pretty good. Smite the Monstrous. Four mana, destroy target creature with power four or greater. We've seen this card a million times. The end. Yep. Tazim Raptor. 2-2 two, two for three. A 2-2 two, two flyer for three. When it enters the battlefield... You may return a land you control to its owner's hand. So this is just a, a limited flyer. That's fine. That's trying to trigger your landfall again. Does no, it seem like the flying is too close to the top? It does on the image. Yeah, it seems like it's like it's pushing the thing. Also, I don't think this is just for for landfall trigger. This also picks up a spell. <gasps> it does pick up a spell. That's exciting. I like yes. it. I like yeah. it. Oh, I don't hate that actually. If this is a bird wizard, I'd be again. I'd be in for it. But if you're just gonna put a bird here. Oh, that sucks. Just give me a give me a creature type. Give me Taz, a rogue bird. What? A rogue bird. Like he's out doing his thing. Tazri, Beacon of Unity, five mana for a four six. This spell costs one less for each creature in your party. So this again, this could be a one mana four six. Uh <laughs> for four mana or up to eight mana, depending on what colors you use, all the colors. Two two blue hybrid, two black hybrid, two red hybrid, two green hybrid. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal up to two cleric, rogue, warrior, wizard, and or ally cards. Ally as well. And put them into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library. This is actually pretty good. 
This card's very good. Uh, the I think this card's only good though because it's way it costs way less than the curve. I don't think that ability is very relevant, honestly. Really, just drawing two? Because uh, I have to. I would. I would assume that first off, I would assume your party decks are generally going to be two color. Um, I mean, there may be some ch people trying three color. So at minimum, it's going to cost you five mana to activate this. Well, no, because one of your colors is going to be white. So if uh, your second color is green, then you're going to go green, seven. one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, it's going to cost you seven. Yeah, so I, that, that second ability, is I, I don't really see that being relevant. But the fact that you can pay three mana, like very easily pay three mana and get a four, six. Whoop. It's good. Yeah, I mean, plus the ability in the late game is just fine. I mean, like if you're going to activate it, activate it. Big deal. No, I, I definitely think there will be games where the ability is activated and it's huge. I mean, it's just pure card advantage. But I also think that the main reason that this card is great is the fact that you can pay three mana and have four six. Hmm. Okay. Emiria's Call is the first double face card. We've talked about this a little bit. Four, white, white, white. Seven mana for a sorcery. Create two four four white angel warrior creature tokens with flying. Non-angel creatures you control get indestructible, so they can kill your angels, but every other creature gains indestructible. And <clears> this <throat> is on the back side of Emiria, or the front side of Emiria Shattered Skyclave, which is basically just a planes, doesn't have planes type, uh, that you can pay three life to put it into play untapped. Yeah, this card's busted. I think this card's good. This is very good. I, I think people are complaining about this card because it's not like over the top broken and they're like I don't want to pay 7 <laughs> mana if it doesn't win me the game I'm like but then you don't have to pay 7 you just play it as a land like you put yeah. it in your mana base it's a card that you're playing in your mana base yeah that's this card seem, this is one of the better ones um, this is very good the fact that you can have it come into play untapped in your in your white aggro aggressive decks paying 3 life is not that big of a deal I don't think um, this card's very good yeah I think this card is great I mean I think all of I'm going to be honest I think all of these cards are great maybe the blue ones maybe suspect but the reason being, like, they're just bonus cards. You put them in your mana base. Like, you're not playing this as a 20, 28th land. You're not no. like, you don't have your full mana base, and then you add this card to your to, to your non-land count. Like, this is just a card that you add to your deck as a as a land. And in the late game, if you don't need the land, you just get two four fours and make all your guys indestructible. Like, it's just upside. It's period upside. I think uh, I think you're better suited to answer this question, but Team Jabro would like to know if you could describe these <laughs> in the context of their ability to pwn in cube. Team Jabro, John, I just mentioned you in stream the other day, and I have a serious question for you uh, that I'll ask you like on Facebook later. I'll message you later, and uh, it's really funny as you show up. Always good to see you, buddy. They get they even get indestructible blocking. That's why. What do you mean? What are you saying right now? Because they're indestructible till your next turn. Oh, yeah, until your next turn. Right. It's not even, like, just until the end of turn. So, like, if they go to their turn and then, like, try to do a sweeper, all everything but your angels is going to live, right? So it's yes. pretty good. Very good. Yeah, I just think this card is great. Like, it's it's free. It's a free card you add in your deck. This card is great. Kabira Takedown. Two mana. It deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creature or planeswalker. Backside... Uh, give me give me the ETBs on these on the back side if you can. Everything else uh, is pretty much just enters the battlefield tapped and taps for that color mana. Um, this is good because it deals damage to a planeswalker. It also deal. It doesn't have to be attacking. It's not blocking. It's an instant. You can kill anything that's just sitting there. Um, this card this also good. seems good, especially because yeah. again, it's a land, right? If you don't need <laughs> the ability, you play it as a land. This card's good. I like this card. I, I don't see four because I think in the decks that are going to use this, it it can't have too many tap no, lands. In the in like the party deck though, can't you just see this as like a, a two or three of as like just a, in your in your mana base? Well, no, I'm I'm I, I agree that I think two is the right number potentially three if it's a slower yeah um, mid range style party deck. Then 100 percent I could see three even four. But honestly. when I have like four or five lands on board and I draw one of these, I'd much rather have a Kabira takedown than a land. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, this card I think this is definitely going on the list. It's playable for and sure. They get they get so much flexibility because of the fact that they're just lands if you don't want them as spells. And you know what? You know what sucks? There's so many times where we see this card for two mana um, in red, but it only deals damage to creatures. But the fact that you can instantly take... Yeah. It's huge. Yeah, knocking a Planeswalker out's good. Yeah. 
McKindy Stampede, five mana for a sorcery. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two until end of turn. And this backside is, like a... is just the Enter's Battlefield tap planes. So I, I think we're going to go down and we're going to say like, uh, yeah, this is playable. Yeah, this is playable. It's, it's so just here's a matter the thing. of which ones. It's not great, Mm-mm. but it's good enough to just put <laughs> in your mana base. I don't like, that's what I don't understand. Like, obviously there's diminishing returns on how many tap lands you can have in your mana base, right? But when you have the option between like, okay, this deals damage to a creature or planeswalker, this one pumps my team. This is basically kind of like an overrun, right? Like, yeah, it's one less than an overrun, but it's still just an overrun that occupies a land slot. <clears throat> I like it. Yeah, I don't know. Like again, I, I just, I, I feel like the cost is so low for these cards. So the funny thing the about these cards, cost, that is, right. The funny thing about these cards is we're talking about how amazingly awesome the ability of these cards is but i don't look at all these cards and say these cards are on the power level of an uro of wilderness like they're not these don't seem like a design mistake no they're not because I don't they're think so they they're so free for everyone to use that but they're just that good like these seem like slam dunk designs i agree with you one of my least favorite things about magic is mana screw and mana yeah. flood the resource system and these mitigate that these give you the the whatever you need in the late game or in the early game like if i need more lands in the early game this is that if i need a, a spell that's not utterly busted in the late game i have that yep like these trade like the power level of cards like uro for for balance basically <laughs> for more yeah. consistency like these these mitigate variance more you yep. know while not being actually broken Yep. I, I all right. Know. I think these cards are great. Yeah, Ondu, we can say that about as we read them all. Undo inversion. Again, I'm just putting this on the list automatically. It's just really good. Yeah. Um, it's very rare that a card like Planar Cleansing doesn't see play at some point. Uh, Undo inversion is a rare seven, eight mana six six white white destroy all non land permanents. Really strong. Gets all planeswalkers, all enchantments, all creatures. And on the back, it's Ondu Sky Ruins. It enters the battlefield tapped out of white. If it's, if there's a blue white, if there's blue white control, they're probably playing at minimum three. Right. That's the thing. It's lit- again, it's a land, but it's also a board wipe. Yeah. And it's like the thing is, in the in the control decks, like you can go turn three, play an untapped land, keep a counter spell up. Turn four, play a tapped land, keep a counter spell up. Right. Like there's a certain there's definitely points on the curve in control decks where you don't need an untapped land. So you have these options to play like these these lands untapped or, or tapped rather. So Ker- Kerwit, you said, are these cards? Is this going to be a new companion situation where everyone has to play them? I think the key word with what you said was has to play them. We we tried to alter the decks that we built in order to fulfill companion restrictions. You don't have to alter your decks for these cards. You can yeah. simply include them. Companions were centerpieces that you built around. Yes. Uh, these lands are cards you add into your decks that already exist, right? And obviously not every deck is going to want Undo Inversion. Very few decks are going to want Kabira M- McKinney Stampede, right? Like these, the thing is, like all of the cards we've seen so far, all the double face cards fit into existing archetypes differently, right? Exactly. Like, the deck that Undo Inversion goes into is completely different than the deck that M- McKinney Stampede goes into. So yeah. like, these aren't cards that you're changing your deck to, to to add. These are decks that you add to your existing archetype, and without like having to change it that much. To be honest with you, so yeah, it, it feels it feels like these cards basically say uh, instead of saying how can I change my deck in order to play this card, these cards are what kind of deck am I playing? Oh, I can play these. Cards. I can I can I can add this. Thankfully, right? Yes. Like I, yeah, I agree. Like and none of them seem inherently broken. Like none of this is Luris or Garuda power level. Like I'm not seeing. I haven't seen any of these four cards are going to fundamentally break the game and combo off on turn three. They all, they're all overpriced as well, but they're overpriced because they're basically free additions when, when it comes to deck building. That's the price you pay, Franklin. I'm okay with it. I imagine this is the last one. Probably not. I think there's a common. Oh, it's another uncommon. Sajiri shelter one in a white target creature. You control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Again, (laughs) <laughs> uh, it's Sajiri Glacier on the back and enters the battlefield tapped and you can add a white again very good like it's still uh... God willing is a very 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 nice card to have in your deck in your and, aggro deck your white and the other deck. thing is because they all come into play tapped you're never going to play like 
24 of these as your mana base, right? But I bet some crazy people will. Like, you will play, like, Amiria's Call, Kabira Takedown, McKinney Stampede, Ondo Inversion, and Sejuri Glacier. You'll pay, play all five of those as 20 of your lands in your main deck, you know? <laughs> and then, like, you'll play something else. And that's going to be funny, you know? Or you'll play, like, blue ones or red ones or whatever. But, like, you know, I mean, there's definitely been decks in Magic's history where all the lands come into play tapped. I look at, like, uh, Cruel Control back in the day. You know, or like five color control where you would have like vivid lands and you would have things like crumbling necropolis and like all of your lands would come into play tapped. So I can definitely see decks where like all of these lands come into play tapped and you're just kind of exploiting the fact that like, because actually you can play like 50, right? You can play 50 double face land cards in your deck and then yeah. every card you play is a land and a spell. And that doesn't seem broken because boy, you're going to be behind the curve. It just seems kind of funny. Yeah, I saw a blue-white control deck list that literally had zero lands. The only lands in the deck were modal, and honestly, the, my first thought was, oh, this is stupid, but I looked at the list, and I'm like, this 100% could work. But also, like, every one of your spells costs a lot more, right? Because they're, they're all overpriced because <laughs> of their versatility. So, right. yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to find the downside here. I don't think there's a downside, but I don't think they're broken, so it's great. It's a really good... Uh, yeah. Skyclave Cleric, a 1-3 for 2. When it enters the battlefield, you gain 2 life. So it's a main deck land that you can play as a creature that's good against, against mono, like mono red, red decks in yeah. game 1. It's a 1-3 blocks tons of things. <laughs> you gain 2 life, and it's a Cleric, so it still counts toward your good Cleric synergies. Here's the other thing, um, now that we're, we're finishing with this color. Here's the other thing I love about these cards. They're not all one type. You have sorceries, you have instants, instants you, you have like, creature, yeah, creatures. Yeah, creatures, right. So when you're playing cards like uh, Adventurous Impulse where that allow you to search, if you need a land and you hit four creatures but you hit one Skyclave Cleric, you can grab that and play that as your land. Yeah. And Skyclave Basilica enters the battlefield tapped. Yep. That is all the white cards. That is a good amount of white cards. I think there were a ton of playables. And, uh, it's nice a lot. To see. Nice to see white doing decently again. So you have Anti-Cognition is the first blue card. One and a blue. Counter target creature or planeswalker unless if they pay two. So it's kind of like rune snag, a limited rune snag. If an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, instead counter that spell, then scry two. Okay, that seems pretty good. That's really good. <laughs> um, so it's a hard counter once they have eight cards in their graveyard and you get to scry for two mana. It's very good. Oh boy. I'm going to put it on the list. Yeah. Because I mean, 99% of the time when you're playing Quench, Quench was a playable card. People were yeah. playing Quench in standard. I would say 99% of the time you're countering a planeswalker or a creature. My one problem with Voracious Great Shark, which is a card I absolutely love, is that it doesn't say creature and planeswalker. It says creature and artifact. Yeah. The two biggest threats in, in, in standard and in constructed are planeswalkers and creatures. So, yep. you know. Bubble Snare. One blue for an enchantment. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, tap Enchanted Creature. So it, to kick it, it costs three more. So it's basically Capture Sphere at that point. Four mana. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So you're paying one blue to put it on an a tapped creature, or four to tap a creature and keep it tapped. Uh, no, that's incorrect. You can put it on an untapped creature. You can, Sure, you can, right. Um, and then they, they, they get like one attack out of it. So this card is actually quietly one of my favorite cards in this entire set. Cards like this always see play at some point yeah this is very good for one like one mana this is very good i mean they get one attack but then on your turn you get to play this for one tap them down forever and then still keep like a counter spell up yeah this this card again this this card is not like oh my god it's so good it's going to go in every blue deck but if you're playing some sort of mono blue this is a way to deal with creatures that you can't normally uh successfully deal with and, and deal with them permanently and the problem with capture sphere is that it always costs four if the yeah. creature's already tapped it still costs four yeah this is going to cost you one a good amount of the time yeah this if card's you to this and they have a six six on board you're just like all right keep it tapped down for one mana it's good yep deals it's with a good, gargaroth guys. too a what a gargaroth they can even and now that i think about it, it can deal with because it can tap it. on its own yep yeah uh, four mana for a three three Cascade Seer. When Cascade Seer enters the battlefield, Scry X, where X is the number of creatures in your party. Yeah. Is this too strong if it said Scry X and then draw a card? No, it's definitely not too strong. But like one of the things I, I tell people is that like magic cards aren't designed; they don't design them to be too powerful and then take them down one notch. 
Yeah. You know, you just design cards the way you design cards. Like not everything is not, it's not a, it's not, not a certain way because it'd be too powerful that way. It probably just wasn't meant to be that way. You know? No, I, I, it was actually more so just me asking, do you think it, that in standard that, that this card would be too much if it was four mana, three, three, that when it enters the battlefield at minimum, you scry one, draw a card. It's pretty good. That I mean, is it's like, good. It's like, it's like a, I mean, Muldrifter's a two, two for, for five that right. draws you two. This is a three, three for four that draws you one and a scry. Yeah, I think and that And you could be, like scry four. Good. Yeah, I think it'd be really good. I think it'd be good. I think it'd be definitely playable. Yeah, I think it would be, I think it would be like a, a key card uh, in the set, but it wouldn't be too overpowered. Oh my God. What Thoth Life said, you can kick Bubble Snare from the grave casting <clears throat> with Luris. You can yeah. cast Bubble Snare with Luris and then also kick it. I'll kick it. Oh, okay. Charix, the Raging Isle. It's your boy. Four <laughs> mana for a zero seventeen. That's right. Zero. So is this the highest toughness in Magic? No. Isn't there a twenty twenty? Wait. Merit Lage is a twenty twenty, but it's not a creature. Yeah, but it's, it's not, not a creature. Card. Hold on, let me check. Highest natural toughness of a card. Nice. Yep, Brett said it. I trust Brett. Brett is a commander. Uh fucking commander expert so i think if anyone would know he would know that's insane spells your opponents cast the target charx the raging isle cost two more to cast so don't try to kill it so it's, it's 017 blocks are are you still looking i am you, i mean we've already I'm, I'm not i don't even have a doubt okay this is the Just kind see. of thing brett would look up like three mana charx gets plus x negative x until end of turn where x is the number of islands you're still looking you're still I'm not looking, looking. No, no, I, I see you it's looking. It's my neck. <laughs> or X right, number. So I have four islands. It's a four thirteen. If you have ten islands, it's a ten seven. I don't know what to make of this card, man. I love the design. I love that they're just like, let's make a legendary crab that's a zero seventeen. Like it's just, it's just, it's not like broken pushed, but it's like creatively pushed in all the right ways. Like the name, the the creature type, the toughness. Like it's just a cool card. This is a super cool card. I don't. I don't think it's playable. I think a four mana is too expensive. But it's really cool. Name one creature that can get through this that doesn't have death touch. Yeah. Uh, none. Fa phantom. Uh, what's uh, what's the phantom? <laughs> Jesus. What's the unblockable phantom? <laughs> it's not even legal and standard, Rob. It's a friggin' Modern Horizons card. Don't keep adding, you know, like metrics that I have to chilling hit. Just... trap. One blue target creature gets negative four if you control a wizard. Draw a card. That's not bad. It's, I mean, the draw a card is really the only saving thing on this card. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's not bad. If you don't control a wizard, though, it's kind of trash. It's bad. I don't think it's good enough. I'd have to see. I'd have to look at all the wizards. I'm going to keep it in my mind, and I'm going to consider it. Okay. But I don't, don't feel put great it on a about list. it. Don't put it on a list. I'm not. Okay. Cleric of Chill Depths. Two mana for a one three. When it end, when it double when it blocks a creature, that creature what? doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Eh, we've seen this a million times. Yeah, it's so good. This is like Ice Queen from Throne of Eldrain, you know. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? No, I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? No. Concerted defense, one blue. Counter target non creature spell unless its controller pays one plus an additional one for each creature in your party. This card's very good. I know. This card's so good. You had me at one blue and counter target spell. Counter target, blah, 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 blah. Concerted defenses. Yeah, it's basically concerted defense. One one, one defense, not defenses. What's the unity of the defense? Yeah, I mean, it's playable on its own because it's basically kind of just four spike. Yeah. But like once you have one or two party members, it's like really good. You really, it's, so if you have one party member, then at minimum it's a, it's a whatchamacallit, right? A spell pierce. So now, like, white is the default party type, right? Like, you're always going to be white X, right? That seems that seems correct. Or, I'm or could you be... What? You could, you could be whatever you want, dude. Okay. 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 Confounding Conundrum. Two mana, one and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Oh, great. So I've already paid... It's, it's paid me back already. Whenever oh. a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, if that player had another land into the battlefield, they return a land. So basically, it like it disincentivizes like fetch lands or ramping. This is the this is their way of saying like, all right, we're sorry about growth spiral. <laughs> growth spiral? No, it doesn't Gro even do anything against growth spiral because growth spiral is uh, is an instant, so you just play it. 
on their turn and then it doesn't count so yes uro right correct yeah this this card this this card like you said this this is a this is an I'm sorry card. Yeah. Also, I I I don't I don't even think like this is is this something you really want when they're playing Uro? I don't think it's that good. I don't either. I mean, even if I just play Uro to draw a card in game three, like that's fine. Yeah. Or I put now. I guess you can't. You can't. So the problem with it, you can't like put. Yeah, you can't. It doesn't matter. It's not exciting. I mean, it's it's this is kind of like Blood Sun, right? It's it's they're making you pay for the effect, but you get to draw a card. It just feels weird to put this in my deck. Yeah, this this card is I definitely don't think this card is nuts. Like this card, there's very few deck. I mean, like it's very specific deck types that this that this affects. It's it's a sideboard card at best, I think. And even then, like it's only shutting off one particular portion of the decks it's it's played against. So I do think it's obviously good against fetches. However, I don't think it's as good as you think, right? So like if I cast a spell, then they're cracking their fetches in response to it. Okay. Um, then on the um, the only way this is good, or is they if, just cast it on your turn, they'll crack their fetch on your turn. Exactly. I was gonna say the only way this card's good is if this card's on the if you're on the play and you're playing against a deck that is trying to move up the curve. So I, I could see how in, in older formats this this could do something, but I don't think it's I don't think it just like destroys fetches. You know, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's broken. I think it's obnoxious. I think there are yeah. definitely ways to play around this. I think there's ways to deck build around this. I mean, it's just a card that we have to know exists and you have to kind of play around it. Like, I don't think it's broken by any means. You know, and you know what also what also is funny? In in um, in Modern right now, Mystic Sanctuary uh, control decks, like Uro decks, are huge. And the funny thing is, you could, you could use... If your opponent has this card, you could fetch your Mystic Sanctuary and then get your instant from your graveyard, put it back on your library, and then that, put the Sanctuary back in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because Mystic Sanctuary really needed a better uh, another engine. That's interesting. Do we, do we put it on the list? I think you should because okay. I definitely think it's playable. I, I I think it's it's very niche. Put it on the list. Coral Helm Chronicler, form three mana for a two two. Whenever you cast a kick spell, draw a card, then discard a card. I don't like. I don't feel like looting should be a benefit. Like I, I love to loot, but like it's not. I don't feel like it should be a perk on rare cards. I feel like just let me draw a card. Yeah. When Coral Helm Chronicler enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a card with Kicker from among them and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom. So this does draw you a card when it comes into play. Not bad. Ideally. It just depends on Kicker, right? It depends on the cards that are right. You're, and you, you have, have to play kicker. a bunch of Kicker cards, obviously, to, to to maximize your chances. So you would have to have in your forty card deck, you'd have to have what eight eight Kicker cards for this to for this to basically almost hit. That's a yeah. lot. But, I mean, you might be playing... You're probably going to play them anyway. But, I mean, like, is this constructed playable? No, I don't think so. I don't, just how many kicker cards... Like, it really depends on the quality and, and quantity of kicker cards in Standard. Yeah, and I think that kick, kicker is just so expensive. Like, like kicker is is always over overpriced because, because you're, you know, getting, you're getting a huge effect. Right. Yeah. And it's funny because the last two cards were Confounding Conundrum and Coral Helm Chronicler, and that's a lot of alliteration. <laughs> Cunning Geyser Mage. That just sounds funny. Uh, three, two for three. So that's just a normal rate. But then you kick it for three. Uh, when Cunning Geyser, Mage, Cunning Geyser Mage enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return up to one other creature to its owner's hand. I like this card for limited a lot. I mean, it's it's six mana for a bouncer, but it's also three, two for a, for a three mana creature. The only way that this card is any good in, in is if there's it, the fact that you can bounce your own creature with it. It doesn't say your opponent. Hmm. But still, that's six man is expensive. I can't. Yeah, see but anything. I'll just play with my Coral Hump Chronicler, and then I'll just uh, put it in my hand for free, Rob. So suck it. You can do that. Deliberate. <laughs> one and a white, or one and a blue, rather. Scry two, and then draw a card. It is an instant. Is this better than opt? No. Is it better than anticipate? Yes. Hmm. Yes, hundred percent. Is it better than? Is it better than Wait, the enchantment? Why? Why better than anticipate? Thing? You're both essentially looking at three, right? You can put yeah. two on the bottom and look at the third card, and you, you have An to take that one. Anticipate does not give you the option to keep two cards that you like. Okay. Anticipate doesn't allow you to hide a card in your hand either. Hmm. 
What do you mean hide a card in your hand? So let's say let's say you scry two. Right. Right. And there is a card that you want. Right. Uh, um. But you're for some reason worried that they may have some way to interact with your hand. Right. Discard spell. Right. So you, you can leave it on top. top. So yeah, like a yeah. brainstorm. Um. But you're not hiding a card in your hand, right? Like that makes it seem like you're putting a card back. From hiding your hand. a card on top. I'm sorry. Oh, sure, sure. 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 Yeah. Sure. Um. And draw a card. That's true. Anticipate doesn't say draw a card, so triggers. I, yeah. I think the card is definitely on par with with anticipate at the very least. I mean, this this. I mean, we already have this in standard, right? This is just the enchantment. I can't remember what it's called. Omen of the Sea. Yeah. Without the scry. The three is, mana scry. What does Omen of the Sea do exactly? It's the exact same thing, I think, isn't it? Omen of the Sea is when it enters the battlefield, scry two, then draw a card. Yeah, it's literally the same thing. <clears throat> yeah this is i don't want to say strictly but it's pretty much strictly worse than omen of the sea right the only thing is is the card, card type has to be relevant that's it right well they can kill omen of the sea but you've already gotten the same exact value off of this yeah so it's almost better if they kill it because then they're wasting a card right so like the fact that it's an enchantment is almost better um this is an instant so it would trigger things that trigger instants or sorceries but I think Omen of the Sea is... I, I mean, I can't see a reason why you play this over Omen of the Sea. Oh, yeah. Omen, Omen is just better, I think. I agree. I wouldn't put I'm it putting on the list. A, you wouldn't put it on the list? No. I'll take it off, then. Take it off the list. It's gone. I'll put Omen of the Sea on in its place. Okay. Expedition Diviner. Four <laughs> mana for a 3-2 flyer. So that's pretty much your standard snapping Drake rate. As long as you control another wizard, it has when this creature dies, draw a card. That's kind of cool. Yeah, but it's no good. No. Field research, three mana. Draw two cards. If this is this card is this card's f fantastic. What? No way. Are you serious? No way. Divination is a standard playable card. It is consistently False. regularly playable. Yes. False. Divination was a standard playable card years ago. It really was not that long ago. Dude, there's no way this is playable. If it was an instant, then I would say yes. There's no way this is playable. This is divination. This is a strict upgrade on divination. I agree with that. <laughs> I concur. But this card is not playable. Um, hold on. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the last time divination was was uh in standard formats, and it was. I don't think it was as long ago as you're thinking it was. Oh, you know what? It must be playable because mediocre Magic fans said they agree with me. That I was think, a joke. I think this card's good. I don't think this card's anywhere near playable. Interesting. Uh, but I will tell you this. You're going to draft this card like four or five times in the same draft every time you can. I mean, I'll always kick this to draw three cards in the late game. Like, that's just me. Well, it's because you, you like to kick it. Can we move on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I, I, there were definitely blue white control decks that were playing Divination at some point in not the terribly distant past. Yeah, but I, I don't think you can be playing a sorcery speed way to draw in a blue white control deck. Okay, I'll take it off the list because I'm hearing you, but I, I, I don't agree. Glacial Grasp, three mana, tap, tap target creature if its controller mills two cards. That creature doesn't untap, draw a card. This card does a lot. Taps a creature. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's neck. Why does the why is the mill part in between those two though? Yeah. Hey, tap target creature. Its controller mills two cards. Oh, by the way, that creature doesn't untap. Like that feels like <laughs> got to tell you. Yeah, like it feels like you just kind of interjected that. You're like, oh, by the way, and then draw a card. I don't know. I don't think it's any good. I think no. three mana is too expensive just to tap down a dude. You draw a card though. Yeah. Still you not. mill two. Wait, what? You get to mill two? Mm hmm. Do the, does the creature untap? Uh, hold on, let me check. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. No, it does not. No, it does no. not. <laughs> I couldn't tell because it was all the way at the end. It was hard to yeah. tell. I don't think this is any good. Inscription of insight. You can talk about this one. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna put it on the list. You think this is good? Or oh god, you're being serious again, aren't you? Three and a blue. Uh -huh. Inscription of Insight Sorcery uh -huh. with Kicker Two Blue Blue. Uh -huh. Choose one if this spell was kicked. Choose any number instead. Mm -hmm. Return up to two target creatures to their owner's hand. Scry two, then draw two. Target player creates a XX blue illusion token where X is the number of cards in their hand. I think that this card is very good. Okay, so you were just trolling at first. 
Yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, I, I don't think it's amazing because it's eight mana total. That's a freakish amount of mana. But the, it's a versatile. It's very versatile. Yeah, flexibility is a, is a thing. Bouncing two creatures for two mana or for four mana, like that's good value. Like you could probably that's get like, you can get six to eight mana ver- at a value out of that. Uh, scry yeah. two, then draw ca- two cards. I mean, okay, it's sorcery. It sucks, but like, Typically, four mana is what you're paying for draw two in standard sometimes. Inspiration, Glimmer of Genius. Um, this is just Glimmer of Genius at sorcery speed, right? Scry yeah. two and then draw two. Yeah. Uh, and then you can you can create... Like, you can literally, if you're kicking this, bouncing two of their guys, drawing two, and then making an XX where X is the number of cards in your hand. So at minimum, you get a 2-2. Two, two. At minimum, if this was the last card in your hand. Yeah. Like, I think this card is... So it doesn't replace the four mana draw spells. It's just a, it's a flex card. It feels, it feels like a flex slot and does pretty much has, has application at all times. Right. The versus again, again, like Zendikar, in my opinion, is one of the most versatile and flexible like sets that I've seen in a long time between, between cards having kicker, between having modal cards and between having lands that act as both lands and spells. Like, the, the amount of decisions you have both in deck building and <clears throat> gameplay because of these, do I wait to kick this card? Do I, what do I choose for inscription of insight? Do I play it now? Do I wait? Like there's yeah. so many decisions. Yeah. No, I love I like people. I love people talking about how cards are hot garbage and then they what? get proven wrong when, when those cards are in, are just regularly played in standard. Put, put professor double D on the list. That way we can come, we can come back. <laughs> oh man. That's wonderful. Uh, I'm gonna... That was Glimmer of Genius. Shaw Sh- Gardener. Shaw Gardener. Shaw Gardener. This is very good. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna clip this this comment so that one day we can come back to it and 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 be like, well, look what happened. I just think people are hypercritical of new cards and they always want to be they always want to be like in the know. They want to be the dude that has the insight that no one else can see about these cards, you know what I mean? And they're like, I see something that no one else sees and you guys think it's going to be playable and I know it's not because of all my hidden insight. But they're just wrong most of the time. Like I remember a dude saying Jace the Mind Sculptor was unplayable or not or Jace Vin- Vrin's Prodigy. Jace Vrin's Vr- Vrin's Prodigy was play was was uh was spoiled and someone was like this card is terrible. <laughs> unplayable and then me and ollie were like no it's really good and um he deleted his comment eventually <laughs> so yep uh into the royal two mana we know what this does return an online permanent if it's kick to draw a card the kicker's two this card's excellent going on the list yep this card's excellent love it <clears throat> Jace. I actually I like the art on that card. I just wish the right side of the art was more in the center, if that okay. makes sense. That's the only well, thing I dislike. Rob Castillo, art critic. <laughs> Jace Mirror Mage, four loyalty planeswalker for three mana. Another three mana planeswalker, guys. One blue blue. It has kicker two, which is unheard of on planeswalkers. When Jace the Mirror Mage enters the battlefield, if it was kicked create a token that's a copy of jace mirror mage except it's not legendary and its loyalty is one now the abilities on jace plus plus one scry two so he goes up to five zero draw a card and reveal it remove a number of loyalty counters equal to the cards converted mana cost from jace mirror mage this card seems very good so at minimum if you kick this you can pay five mana and draw two cards and potentially keep uh keep your jace spot jace behind right and like the odds of you hitting lands off of this are quite high right you're you're probably going to keep one of your jace right but like if you scry with one of them you're going to keep both of them yeah yeah you know like i mean plus it's again it's versatility you play it on three as a three mana planeswalker and you can zero it very frequently and hit either lands or one or two casting cost spells you're going to draw probably two cards off this which makes it it, this is just straight better than Jace Bellerin, right? Yeah, and also Scry 2 is big time. Seeing two cards, that's a lot. Yes, plus you're going to draw the first one on your next turn, and you can activate this to draw the second one, so you can still set it up so that you're taking minimal damage from this guy. Yeah. Plus, like, on 5, you just get to have two Planeswalkers. This card is just freaking phenomenal. Yeah, this, car- this card's really good. Put it on the list. It's another 3-mana Planeswalker, so they don't know how to not break 3-mana Planeswalkers, so... I'm sure this 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 card will kick my ass a bunch of times, and yeah, I'll be sure. like, "Well, I can't kill both your Jaces, I guess." 
Or your Teferis. Yeah, just put but just put Maelstrom Pulse in every standard format, please. <laughs> it's like, I'll, I'll activate my Jace. Let me draw a card. Let me activate the other Jace I have. Let me draw a card. And then I'll plus Teferi. Oh, on your upkeep, I'll plus my Teferi. And I'll draw another card. Oh, Jesus God, I want to die. <laughs> Living Tempest. Five mana for a 3-3 three, three flying flash. I like this art. It's very Spider-Man Far From Home. I never watched that movie. Okay. Wow. I've seen the rest. I don't know why I haven't watched that. I should watch that. I'm going to watch that for you. Watch it for you, you idiot. Okay. Did you see Into the Spider-Verse? Uh, the cartoon one? Yeah. My kids did. It's literal. It's fantastic. And the fact that you like didn't... I know you and you're probably like, oh, I don't want to watch a cartoon movie. That's literally no. probably... Then why haven't you seen it? It's I fantastic. Don't I don't know. Because no one told me it was fantastic. You heard it here. Can First. we get some can we get some love in the chat saying Into the Spider-Verse is fantastic? Lull Mage's Domination. X blue blue blue. This spell costs three less to cast if it targets a creature whose controller has eight or more cards in their graveyard. There's definitely a, a mill theme. Mm -hmm. Gain control of target creature with converted mana cost X. This card's really good. So in order to gain control of a Euro. Six mana. Six mana or three mana. Or three mana. If it's a late game Euro. This is so funny because it's like an uncommon. But it's it, good. It, yeah, this is this is gonna be played. This is playable. Keep in mind it's also a sorcery. It's not an enchantment, so you just keep the creature. You yeah, it's can't yours. get rid of your enchantment. Uro does exile cards. Obviously, I'm talking about if they have enough cards that they exiled and enough cards after that to still have eight. I'm still that's I'm why obviously, that's why I said late game, yeah. Right. I'm not I'm not I'm not assuming that they're always gonna have eight cards. That's silly. Also, the Uro never leaves the battlefield, so it doesn't die to its own trigger. What? Does someone say it does? I did. Okay. Okay. <sighs> yes, the new Spider-Man game for PS5 uh, is focused on Miles Morales, which is great. I'm really looking forward to it. Maddening Cacophony. One and a blue. Each opponent mills eight cards. If this spell was kicked, it becomes traumatized, which each spell opponent mills, each opponent mills half their library rounded up. This is nice because <clears throat> I like rounding up, basically. <laughs> when there's a, a an effect that's that's negative for the opponent, I want to round up. Okay. So I mean it's it's six, the kicker's four, so it's six mana. So six mana you traumatize instead of five mana, which is the tra traditional cost. But it this also automatically turns on this uh eight or more cards in the graveyard mill clause i'd have to see i'd have to see the decks in the format but it, this is it seems pretty strong for what it is i'm not gonna put it on the list because i don't think no. it has a home and it's not like a universally good card that like blue decks are just gonna randomly play but it definitely fits with a theme of the set yeah so it's also each opponent so as brett would say commander playable sure okay Master of Winds, one four flyer for four mana. So, you know, similar to Trade Wind Rider, if you guys are old school. <clears throat> when it enters the battlefield, draw two cards and discard a card. Okay, so similar to like Mull Drifter, if you're old school. Frantic Search, if you're old school. When you cast an instant or sorcery or wizard spell, you may have Master of Winds base, base power become one four or four one until end of turn. I don't know what to make of this card. No, I don't like it. It's a one four flyer. That that nets you a card when it comes into play. I don't like it. But in order to be any sort of threat, um, yeah, any sort of threat, you have to have instants or sorceries. But like, is this how much worse is this than Arclight Phoenix? Right? Like, oh god, that's a big difference. Not, but okay. You have to play three instants or sorceries to get an Arclight Phoenix back from the graveyard. That's three triggers on this, right? So you don't have to have you don't have to have them all in the same turn. You could just have an opt. You're like, okay, I'll attack with my 1-4. No blocks, I'll opt and deal you 4. I don't know. The the fact that if you trigger this one time, it, it has, no matter what, till the end of turn, if they try to kill it, it's based on a 1 toughness. That okay, but, really how, bad. but outside of red, how relevant is that? Disfigure. No one's playing Disfigure. It's not even legal <laughs> in this format, I don't think. I think it is, isn't it? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I, I, I can't judge this. In my opinion, clearly the card comes as a 1-4, because that is generally what you don't want out of your four drop. If the only other thing it does is it draws you a card, essentially. 
or uh, you know double rummage whatever so clearly it's, it's meant to 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 be a 4-1 they make you work for it i just i don't know i don't i don't i don't think this card's any good i'd rather play the 4-4 four, four flyer for 4 that scries every turn and if it's in my opening hand lets me scry, see three extra hearts mm, okay that's fair that's fair i like that card too Merfolk Valconer, 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four flyer. So basically just an air elemental. But whenever you cast a kick spell scry 2, fantastic and limited. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This is not five a rate for standard. No, Merfolk no, no. Wind Robber, 1 mana for a 1-1 one, one flyer. It is a rogue, so it contributes to your party. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player mills a card. I don't care about that. Sacrifice it, draw a card, activate its ability only if opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard. This doesn't do anything like for it's I don't all, like this. Like it does it has like four abilities and all of them are like essentially blanks in my heart. Yeah. This is tough to tough to judge. You have to see this with all the other parts of this deck. Right, to exactly. See if it I mean it's a it's an evasive rogue, right? It's an evasive flying rogue. We know that there's rogue specific cards, it, so it's also it uncommon. is rogues. So you're not gonna yeah. get like four of them in limited. You're not just gonna be like get a bunch of wind robbers and mill them out. Oh, I was talking about for for constructed. Right. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's an evasive rogue. I agree with you, right? But, like, I don't get anything out of this inherently. Like, this card by itself is not going to do anything. Correct. Like, other than, at, like, at if this wasn't a rogue, itself. is this even playable? I don't think it's even that great. Like, it's No, it's, if it's not a rogue, it's not playable. Nope. If it ain't a rogue, it ain't playable. That's what you heard it here first. Negate? I'll put negate on the list. I feel yep. like it's earned it. Yep. Nimble Trap Finder, one and a blue for a 2-1. Nimble Trap Finder can't be blocked if you had another Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, or Wizard enter the battlefield under your control this turn. So it's unblockable most of the time in the party deck, I would imagine. At the beginning of combat in your turn, if you have a full party, creatures you control gain whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. That seems good. I don't like it. Oh, oh okay. That's... I don't think... I, I, I don't think... It's going to be very hard for you to have four creatures on the battlefield and not one of them is removed. And this one comes out on turn two. Turn three at the latest. So it gives you a full turn cycle to deal with it. I don't like this. Okay. Okay, it hurts. But I'll, I'll agree with you. I think it's I think it's fine. It's a 2-1 for two. That, like, it's unblockable and... All your guys I'm, deal draw. that that effect is huge, right? That's like immediately game swinging, like that. But you have to have four creatures. You have to assume this comes out on turn two or turn three, right? So turn four, only three of your creatures are attacking. The potential for them all to get through. If I haven't used removal spells, if my deck isn't full of removal spells to deal with just this two one, then that means I probably have blockers for one or two of your creatures. So. I don't think this is that great. Fine, Rob. Risen Riptide. Three mana for an 0-5. Is this good enough for you? Is this what you want? What? No. Whenever you crap. cast a kips, kick spell, Risen Riptide has base power and toughness 5-5. Five, five, so it becomes a 5-5, five, five, Rob. Kip. Is this what you want? No, this is... But I, I think the art on this... I think this card, if you got rid of the uh, border, it looks like an unlimited card. Interesting. <laughs> the color, the shading makes it look like it it's just looks like, like a... blue elemental ba blue elemental blast. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Roost of Drakes, one blue. When Roost for an enchantment, when Roost of Drakes enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create a two-two Drake. So kickers three. So you're basically getting, uh, you're paying just... one for the enchantment, and then you're just paying for like a wind Drake or something. Yeah. Whenever you cast a kick spell, create a two-two, with flying. I haven't seen enough kicker to make me think that this so, is going to be. Magic loves doing this, man. Wizards R and D loves making like here's a here's a an enchantment based on the the mechanic of the set that makes two two flyers. Uh, this one this is one is when you cycle a card. This one is when you gain life. <laughs> this one is like it's there's so many cards that Draw are an like extra card. Yeah, there's so many yeah. cards that are like make a make a creature when you do the this set's mechanic. Basically, the way I would look at this card is I would go okay. In order to make an, I'm basically tagging on. If I pay an extra two, three, four mana per spell, I get a two-two. This doesn't seem that great. Yeah, I I think it's, I think it's it depends on how much how many kicker spells we have. Yeah. So far, and like I said, I I haven't seen any kicker spells that would be like, oh, that's really good. Like he that's drew, above rate. He drawn crab. Oh, ru ruin crab. One blue for an O three. 
landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield an oppo each opponent mills three cards so you can't mill yourself like ruined crab no or he drunk crab rather i'm getting confused it's okay but milling three is not terrible no 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 <laughs> also can you put can you now put six crabs in your in your in your blue mill deck for for modern no oh, watson's getting up and leaving you mean eight that's what I meant. I don't know why I said six. Like, why did you say? I was like, like, I got confused. I'm thinking of Hearthstone where it's like three cards of each. No, six. I was like, can you put eight, eight crabs in there now? So that beer man man said toughness less than seventeen. <laughs> Sad. Yeah. Now that now now that the other crab is the crab we compare all other crabs to. So that's a tiny crab though. I mean, zero three is pretty decent for that for that little for that crab. Those are I, some baby heat turns though. I bet he doesn't take any crab crab though. He takes zero crab from anyone. Yeah, I agree. He's got the world on his back, man. I'm not going to put it on the list. He's doing his best. Seagate Stormcaller. This is Rob's favorite card in the set. Uh, you can listen to us talk about this one on the Freshly Brewed podcast. Uh, two mana for a 2-1. So not very impressive. Uh, when Seagate Stormcaller enters the battlefield, copy the next instant or sorcery spell you can, with converted mana cost 2 or less. You cast this turn when you cast it. So if I cast this and then I cast, I can cast a Fatal Push or a Thought Seize or whatever. If Seagate Stormcaller was kicked, copy that spell twice instead. So five mana is the kicker. So seven mana base if you want to copy it twice. Dude, since this card was spoiled and we talked about it on Freshly, Freshly yeah. Brewed, and, and like we were talking about like using it in older formats for like Fatal Push and stuff like that, yeah. they, spoil, they spoiled the black card, the one mana removal spell. So yeah. good. So good. So we're putting this on the list, you think? <laughs> Absolutely. And okay. let's move on to the next card. Okay. <laughs> Seafloor Stalker. Three mana for a 2-3. No. Five okay. mana... Seafloor no. Stalker gets plus one plus zero oh, and can't be blocked. This ability costs one less for each creature in your party. This is good and limited. Very. There's good. no amount of creatures in my party that you're going to make me that I'm going to have that are going to make this appealing to me. Even if this was a, was a three mana two three unblockable, you still wouldn't pay. It play. It's funny because this ability costs one less for each creature in your party, so it automatically only costs four. Yeah. Like it never. As long as this is in play, it never costs five, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, this is no good. Why? Like they could say. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's going to be complicated. Shell Shield. One blue. Target creature gets plus O plus three until end of turn. If this spell was kicked, kicker is one. That creature also gets hexproof. This is just a reprint from like Ravnica, right? Uh, Mizium, I don't. Mizium skins or something? I don't know. I will say, I will say oh, though, fine. that they did a great job. I think they did a great job designing this because. Um, obviously dive down is phenomenal at one mana but if all you know all the mono blue decks that played dive down in the past they would not play i don't think they would have functioned the way that they did if dive down cost two mana but the reason i think that they designed this very well is because you still get a protection effect for only for one, one mana, mana. Right. you don't have to, to rely on getting i think so, dive down was almost too good at one mana i think this is I actually agree. way more balanced no, I, I actually think, uh, like, Blossoming Defense, like, all the cards that cost one mana... And, and give Hexproof and a yeah, buff? I think yeah. I think they're a little too a little too powerful. Yeah, I agree with that. I think they were too much. Because so. they're all just one-mana counterspells. That's what they are. They're, like, they're one-mana counterspells. Yep. And I think this is adequately costed. I don't think because it's worse than an existing card that makes it trash. <laughs> I, I do agree it's worse than Dive Down, but I think that's fine. That's a fine... That's like saying, this card's worse than Jace the Mind Sculptor. Like... Yeah, that's going to be a thing that happens. But it doesn't inherently mean every card worse than that is bad. Right? Like, right. Should go on the, is it going on the list? I don't think it goes on the list because I haven't seen a, a blue okay. deck that makes it playable. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Skyclave Plunder. Five <laughs> mana for a sorcery. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is three plus the number of creatures in your party. Put three of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is, no. a lot. this is a lot to take in. Look at the top text cards where X is three plus the number of creatures in your party. So you're scrying three. This isn't, this is, so this is, we've had this card, in, we've had this card in standard. It's, it's not any good. It, it's it, five mana for this effect. It's scry three, draw three, right? Well, no, cause you can look at five and put three. You're always putting three in your hand is the thing. Oh, it's, it's not scry. It's not scry. It's look at. Right. So you can't put them on the bottom. You have to take from those cards. Yeah, this isn't any good. So and it's also sorcery. I mean, it's yes. you're going to play it in limited in the... in the it, it, Whether your deck is a party deck or not, it's always draw three. This card in limited seems fantastic. Yeah. 
But I mean, we have better rates than standard is wrong. <laughs> Skyclave Squid, a 3 2 for 2 with Defender. Landfall, it loses Defender. Would you touch it? I don't think so. I would totally touch it, dude. What if it's poison? Why, why wouldn't you touch this one now? What other squid was I touching? You wouldn't want to touch the ox either. You're talking about creatures with high power, man. Most high, humans high in magic have one or two power. If something has three power, it's probably going to kill me, bro. <laughs> I would touch the squid. Okay. Well, you'll why, isn't he a water, why isn't he a water clave squid? That's a good question, actually. Uh, this dude's not even close to the sky. No. Sure-footed infiltrator. Four mana for a 2-3. Uh, tap another untapped rogue you control. Sure-footed infiltrator can't be blocked this turn. Uh, okay. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Oh, okay. Four give, mana's give, just not. Yeah, I know. Give me this. Uh, what's no. the three mana one? The one three. Uh, is it Edric? Who? Edric. Isn't it Edric? Edric? Edric, Eric? yes, Edric. You can tell Rob doesn't play Commander or Cube very frequently. I play Commander, shut up. What Commander you play? Fucking I haven't lie. played Commander in a while, actually, since I sold all my cards. Tazim Royal Mage, one and a blue for a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. The kicker is four. So it's a 2-1 for two, or it's a 2-1 for six. That is like an Archaeomancer, just basically returns an instant or sorcery. Yeah, I don't think it's any good. No, it's too expensive. Like, the, usually the cost for this ability is four or five. So, at six, you're really pricing me out. Because I don't care about the front end. I don't care about the two-one for two. Yeah. Two-one for two again with flying this time. Okay, mm -hmm. we're getting there. When Thieving Skydiver enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, the kicker is X, and X can't be zero. Gain control of an artifact with converted mana cost X or less. If that artifact is an equipment, attach it to Thieving Skydiver. This card's fantastic. This is so good. We also talked about this. Yes. We also talked about this on the Fresh Rebirth. Yep. We talked about this stealing moxes for like one extra mana. Talked about it stealing soul rings. Signets. Signets. Uh, you can steal a jitte or a sword and have it and have it come through. It's lit. You could have you could steal a uh you could steal uh the four four vigilance do duder. I have nipples, Rob. Can you steal me? I couldn't. I know. This card's fantastic. Uh, Wind Rider Wizard. It's, I can already tell it's junk from the name. For some reason, <laughs> like it's not like a it's not a compelling name. I'm never gonna hear someone say, "Oh, I'll cast Wind Rider Wizard in standards." It's never gonna. And then you're like, "Crap, he drew it." Oh god, I can't believe I'm losing to Wind Rider Wizard control deck. It's more like two two oh, for thank three god, with flying. That. So it's a Drake. Uh, when you whenever you cast an instant sorcerer or wizard spell, you may draw a card if you do discard this. But yeah, it's just a looter. Boop. What are you doing with your arm? Your arm's like, I feel like you're oh, fading sorry. in and out of existence. Zulaport Duelist, 1-1 one, one for 1 with Flash. When it enters the battlefield, up to one target creature gets negative 2, negative 0, and its controller mills 2 cards. So this is very much Fairy Duelist. Apparently, Duelists in blue are Flash creatures that give negative 2, negative 0. That is my impression right now. I don't think it's playable. I don't think so either. <laughs> it's a 1-1 one, one for, for 1. All no. right. Are you ready for the dual face cards, Robert? Let's do the uh, let's do the dual face cards, and then well, let's just read them, and then say, "Yeah, this is playable in this deck." That's what I was gonna say. I'm just I'm gonna get ready, to write them all on the list. Yep. Bane Veil, vale. two mana for an instant creatures your opponent's control get negative two, negative zero till end of turn. This is probably the weakest one along I, with the plus two. That's plus what two. I was like. Yeah, it's not <laughs> great. I don't know if I'm gonna put it on. I don't think you should. All right, I like it. And the alternative is it enters battlefield tapped at a blue. Okay. Glass Pool Mimic, three mana for a zero zero. It already sucks. It dies immediately. Shoo. You may have Glass Pool Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature you control, except it's a shapeshifter rogue in addition to its other types. Woohoo! Okay, so uh, every mimic sees play at some form in magic. That's just the thing. The fact that this is also a land, which is Glass Pool Shore, it's really good, right? Put it on the list. It's just a three mana. I mean, it's, it, the only downside is that it's a creature you control. Why is it not four mana? Well, because it's a creature you control. It's are all the clones that normally cost four mana any creature? Phyrexian metamorph is any creature. Clone is any creature. Yes. You, usually, you want to be able to copy your opponent's creature. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, you'd have to slam dunk me with your knowledge there. You could have just gave me a yes. Yes. Okay. Put it on the list. Okay. Here comes one of my favorites. Dwari, Dwari distri 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 Disruption. Uh, that's really hard to say. 
one and a blue for a counter target spell unless it's controller pays one so it is literally again it's a sensor which is immensely playable but it's a land so good so good it's a sensor but it's a land so good do you remember no the co- okay well never mind then four spike no okay here's the mythic one seagate restoration four blue 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 i think this is the weakest mythic draw cards equals the number of cards in your hand plus one you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game so if you have two cards in your hand you get to draw three for seven so i I definitely think this is the weakest i think this is i don't think this card is great but again it's an untapped source that you can play and it it at the end of the day can replace itself in the late game instead of being a land if you have four cards this draws you five if you have two cards it draws you three i mean we're casting it for seven right so let's be honest if we're at seven mm-hmm. there's two things happening we're already in a control game where i have like a full grip of five cards and this is just game over or i have no cards in hand and i just top deck this and i'm ca- trying to stay alive so here's the alternative the alternative thing that's going to happen is this is going to be the strongest one and our opponents are consistently going to draw eight cards with this, and we're just going to never have a chance after that happens. I agree. This is going to be the finishing card for a top-end control deck. They're going to be able to keep all the ridiculous cards in their hand. The next turn, they're going to cast another Seagate Restoration. They're going to draw 16, (laughs) and then they're going to have 32 cards in their hand, and we're just not going to be able to do anything about it because they just get to keep them all. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. Like, this is... It's a whole turn off, but you're gonna get to—they get to untap with an extra eight cards, so they can just wipe the board with, uh, you know, their undo inversion, you know. So, I put it on the list because I—I don't know. The more I look at this card, like, I don't think it's the best, but I also think it could secretly be the best. So, at the end of the day, it's an un—it's an untapped blue source. Just play it as a fucking land, yep. okay? I think I think I think I think I think any blue deck control would play would play two or three of these at minimum minimum. Uh, if you top deck this, it's just cycle, sure. But it's also yeah. it's still it's be- that's land. still better than playing than top decking an island though. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like even then, like even the worst case scenario is still better than the best case scenario if this was a just a normal island in your deck, which is what it's replacing. Well, no, it's not cycle plus one because you'd have no cards in hand. Cycle you would cycle this, have zero cards in hand, so it would be zero plus one. So you'd just be getting the one card. So. And it's Seagate Reborn on the back, which is obviously out of blue, or comes into play untapped for three life. Yep. Salundi Vision. Three mana. Look at the... For, for an instant. Look at the top six cards of your library. You can reveal an instant or sorcery and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom. This seems good. This card lets you fetch a land. It does let you fetch a land. Look for an instant <laughs> sorcery or land. Put it into your hand. I can't tell you how many times I've played control decks and you always want to get to that magical fourth land when all your draw spells start. Yeah. And you sometimes you you brick and you lose those games. This is an EOT guarantee. You're... Yeah, you play Salundi Vision. You go get your Seagate Restoration. You yep. play it on turn four untapped for three life. Yeah. This is what I mean. Like the versatility of these cards, like they allow you to do things f- to like mana bases and resources that you shouldn't be able to do. And it's really, really great. I like that. Yeah. A l- I like that a lot. Yep. And still in the aisle is the other side. Umara Wizard. Five mana for a 4-3. Whenever you cast an instant sorcerer wizard, it gains flying until end of turn. This is not impressive, right? It's but not, here's but it's the a creature thing. in a non-creature That's deck. what I mean. Like, yeah. Okay, so if, I'm ha- if I have four islands in my mana base, right? I have 24 lands. Four of them are islands. Would I replace two of them with four threes? Maybe. Yeah. It's just a threat. And, like, it gains flying. As long as you... Like, you're playing instant sorcerers anyway. I'm like, all right, I'll draw two, attack you for four in the air. I I think this card is playable. Yeah, I do too. It's an evasive... Like, okay, so, like, how many times in Magic's history has the blue win condition been a shitty flyer? Like, a 3-1 rainbow of Yes. Like, all you need to do is connect a few times... And this card doesn't cost you any slots in your deck. This is a win condition that costs you no slots. Yep. And it will naturally fly based on the cards in your deck. Yeah. Card's good. I don't know, man. I'm. It's wild, dude. Wild. 
Wow. We Meyer Sky Falls. That is the last one for blue. Thank you guys for watching our white and blue set review. We're going to be continuing with black and red next, so be sure to be here for that. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let us know what you think. We will have all the cards listed in the description below, so let us know what you think of those. And uh, let us know what you guys like from the set. You can also check out nordvpn.org slash franklapore. You will get 68% off a two-year subscription plus one month free. And you can check out manatraders.com. Uh, you can use the promo code and link below to get 20% off the first three months of any subscription. Rob used it for a while, and he thought it was great. Man, Traders, it was great. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.